chapter 15 and verse number 13 on today as we continue to talk about or we open up this notion of hope and we want to unpack what Paul gives us as the key to understanding the believer's ideal and the believer's the, the believer's use of hope I want to I want to again offer that definition when we talk about hope you I want you to look at it and think about it in the nature and notion of what hope is hope Meaning the idea that what's wanted can be had. Hope meaning that the events that are, that are going on will eventually turn out for the best. You can hear scriptures articulating that hope, understanding that it is the expectations that I remain centered and looking forward with desire and reasonable confidence that everything is going to be all right. And so we have to ask that question. That when you think in terms of the believer, how hope works for the child of God, hope is made up of the anatomy of hope. And we'll talk about this more. The anatomy of hope is is made up of belief and longing and confidence that takes everything that's going on in your life and places it 
in God's hands as it and the believer remains forward focused with desire and confidence. Question, how do you remain? How does an individual have this sort of disposition when all this other stuff is going on around you? How can you, how can a person defy the voices the dissenting voices and opposing spirits that come all sorts of ways. How do you remain hopeful and hope filled when you got people that are around you that are trying to break your spirit, trying to move you to a place of negativity, trying to do subtle things to cause you to give up and lose hope? Lose the idea that, that there's going to be something good coming out of this. I know I'm talking to at least two or three people. How do you remain anchored when you know you've got to deal with a world that's going through a pandemic, a government that's unstable, relationships that are volatile, jobs that are insecure, um, uh, family situations that are strained, friend situations that are distant, you can't go out. How do you remain how do you remain hopeful and optimistic and looking forward, saying it's going to be all right, things are going to be all right, when you've got all those voices whispering in your spirit, moving and attempting to get you to move off of your base of hope and your base of confident expectation and longing and looking forward with optimism? How do you do it when you've got all of that stuff against you? Paul's going to give us the answer. Paul gives us the answer right out of Romans 15 to begin with, but the Bible is littered with all kinds of verses that help us to appreciate that the child of God not only can remain hope-filled, you can move hopeful, and you can help other people to have hope all at the same time. Romans 15 and verse number 13. I want to read it from the ESV. Then I want to read it out of the Good News Translation. And then we'll make some points. And then it'll be yours. Romans 15 verse 13. The Bible says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. That same text out of the Good News Version of the Bible says, May God, the source of hope, fill you with all joy and peace by means of your faith in him so that your hope will continue to grow by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are three things that Paul's going to give us out of this verse, at least three things that will help us to remain forward focused, that will help us to remain a, a hope field, that will help us to respond against the voices and the antagonistic and dissenting uh, 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 spirits that come our way. Number one out of this text, the source of your hope, the source of my hope is God himself. Notice again, the God of hope. Look at verse 13 again. May the God of hope, right there, stop right there. May the God of hope, remember that the source of your hope, the reason why you and I can remain a uh, a focus on hope is because God is the source, not just of hope, but the source of eternal hope. God is the one who gives us salvation. God is the one who is the objective for every believer. Notice, your hope is not anchored on the outcome. You're not looking for the outcome of a physical event to take place. Your hope and my hope is based on God's will, God's agenda, God's overall desire being unfolded and accomplished. So you can be pleased, you can be hopeful that whatever happens is according to the will and the mind and the mentality and the overall superintendence of God himself. I don't have the kind of mind to know what ought to be. I don't know who ought to live and who ought to pass. I don't know how things ought to transpire in my life. I'm finite. I'm fickle. I'm faithless. I'm fearful. And so are you. And since that's the case, we need to relinquish the rights and the superintendents of our life over to someone who's omniscient, omnipresent, omnibenevolent, who knows everything, is everywhere, been everywhere, in every time, at the same time, who when he shows up, he's on time. That God is the one who's holding my life together and weaving things together the way they ought to be. So my hope and my confidence is in him. So watch when I take my stand on hope. I take my stand on the source of hope, knowing that it's God who's the reason why 
I'm confident. Not because I know things are going to work out. It's God who's the reason why I already believe that whatever happens is supposed to happen. It's God who's allowing my expectations to remain optimistic because God has never done me wrong. God has never let me down. God is always good every day of my life. And I can remain at peace even when people are doing negative things to me. I know ultimately it's a part of my good. God is shaping me, building me, refining me, making me stronger, making me more optimistic, allowing me to trust him deeper, helping me to see the nuances of how he's brought me through, allowing me to see his providential fingerprints over the course of all my life. And so I will not lose my positive spirit because I know that God is the source, not just of my hope, he's the source of eternal hope. Paul would say in Romans 5, put this in your notes, in verse number 2, he says, through him we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Watch Paul. I'm able to rejoice and bring God glory as I take my stand hopefully. Why? Because I know that it's because of God's grace that I'm here anyway. It's because of God's grace that I have what I have. It's because of God's grace that I'm anchored knowing that the source of my hope is God. But wait, wait, wait. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. You, you, you all have to know that what God does in addition to being the source of our hope is that he gives us the actual means of taking hope. In the same text, back to the good news just for a second, he says, may God, the source of hope, fill you. You see that next part? Fill you with joy and peace by means of your faith in him. Watch it from the English standard again. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you got both of those talking about the filling you. I got to give you number two. Not only do you see the source of your hope, but you got to see number two, the secret of your hope. The secret that you and I need to tap into of having the hope, of being able to take your stand, of being able to remain hope filled no matter what, is that there's a filling, F-I-L-L-I-N-G, that allows you to be founded on hope. Now, the filling of your hope. Notice he says again, may the God of hope fill you. Remember that whatever fills you controls you. And if you and I are filled with the keys that allow us to be hopeful, we will never be moved by the winds that try to oppose that hope. What is the key of allowing my mind to be hope filled? The key is by you and I staying in the word of God. Let me say it again, child of God. There's so many passages that remind us that you and I have to have the Bible. We've got to have the word. You've got to have the foundation of your faith laid up in your spirit. In other words, the reason why you would lose hope is because you don't know the mind of God. The reason why you would allow the world to trip you up is because you don't have God's word whispering to your spirit. Whenever you find yourself in a position where you are fearful, Doubtful, you are concerned that you've allowed somebody or something or even your own emotions or your own heart. If you get to those spaces where you let the wrong stuff move you, it's because you don't have enough of God's word in your mind. Do you not know that the more of God's word you have in your spirit, the more hope you have coming out of you? I'm not making it up. Romans 15 and verse number four. Notice what Paul says, talking about scripture, talking about Old Testament text, talking about the word of God which you can bring over even into the New Testament. He says, the things which we have written aforetime were written for our learning. Watch this. That we, through patience and comfort of the Holy Scriptures, might have hope. Do you see it? My hope is on the other end of me reading, me learning, me being comforted by the Word of God. Now watch. When you go back and you look at the examples of old, it gives you hope in the now. When I see God work with Noah, it gives me hope. When I see God work with Abraham, it gives me hope. When I see God work with Moses, it gives me hope. When I see God work with Isaiah, it gives me hope. When I see him work with Isaac, it gives me hope. When I see God deal with Sarah and Rahab and deal 
deal with all the women of old and deal with the men of old. Deal with folk who messed up, who didn't get it right. People who didn't always hold their head up. But God kept on anchoring them, kept on moving with them. He dealt with rebellious Jonah, gave him a second chance. Dealt with hard-headed Joab, gave him a second chance. Dealt with up and down David, gave him a second chance. What does that mean for me? God will give me a second chance when I see God. Bringing people through on the other side of, of a Pharaoh behind them and a nation trying to get them. And yet God will cut a path through the Red Sea. What does that mean? God can protect me from my Pharaoh. He can protect me from my nation. He will cut a path. He'll make a way out of no way. When I see God feeding people in the wilderness with manna and quail, God will take care of me. When you start looking over the course of history and reading the word of God, why did he give it? He gave it so that we, through patience and comfort of the Holy Scriptures, might have hope. Now wait, the God of peace, the God of hope, is filling me. Now watch how that works. The more I'm filled on the word of God, the more my joy is anchored. My peace is secured. It's right here in the text. The more my belief is undergirded and I'm watching the work of the Holy Spirit. Look, when I can see the Holy Spirit at work, watch all this because it's bringing you somewhere. The secret then, the secret to your hope is by being filled up with the mind of God. Listen, if you are ever at a spot where you don't have the hope you ought to have, it's because you ain't got the word laid up in your heart. Get the word in you. And as you get the word in you, you see God's ways. And when you see God's ways, you know the work God can do. Look at this third thing then. Look here, verse number, the third clause of the text. May the God of hope fill you. That's the word. With all joy and peace in believing. That's the word. So that. Say it back so I know you got it. So that. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Here's the third thing. You've seen, number one, the source of your hope. You've seen, number two, the secret of your hope. I need you to see, number three, the so that. The so that is right there in this clause. Now notice something. When you and I are able to witness the work of God through the pages of the inspiration, you and I are able to see the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. It is directly correlated to knowing God. The Holy Spirit's work is directly correlated to knowing God, knowing his word, knowing his promises, knowing his nature. In other words, your ability to trust that God is going to work it out. You can't trust God unless you know God. You can't trust God unless you know God's word. You can't trust God unless you're familiar with God's nature. Now watch how that works. Because I know God. I know that God will. I, I know then that God, I know God's word. Because I know God's word. I am aware of God's nature. Because I know God's nature. I am trusting God's promises. Why? Because my trust is. Is based on my understanding of who God is, my familiarity with his word, and my, my understanding of God's nature. And when I trust who my God is, I already know that God is going to see you through. Now watch, back it back up, because what that means then, what that means is that God wants you to abound in certain things. I want to give you three things on this so that clause. When you have that kind of trust where you know God. And because you know God, that means I know God because I know God's word. I know God's word and I'm aware of God's nature. I'm aware of God's nature so I know God's promises. And when you know those three things, you know your God, you know his word, you know his nature, you know his promises. When you know that, you can, number one, abound in hope. This is just so that you abound in hope. Abound. Don't just have hope on a regular passing moment. Abound. You ought to have hope where you don't let anything get you down. You don't let anybody get you down. I challenge you right now, those of you that have been angry already. It ain't been but a few days in this year. But those of you that have allowed someone to break your spirit, you've allowed someone to tick you off, you've allowed someone to mess up your nerves, you've allowed someone to make you angry, take it back, take it back. Use your hope and know who your God is. Know what God's word says. Know God's nature. Know God's promises. Take it back and keep your joy. Verse 13, keep your peace. Uh-uh, you're not going to take it. I, I've got hope. This thing going to work out. It's going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. The situation's going to be all right. Don't you let somebody steal your joy. Remember this about your joy. you got to give somebody the keys to get into the room to take it. you got to do that. 
Don't you let somebody take your joy. So abound in your hope. But then let me give you number two, a second thing on you so that not only do you, does God want you to abound in your hope, he wants you to help somebody else to have hope. Listen to me. Part of our challenge as the people of God is not only to take the things of God, but to turn around and bless somebody else to understand who our God is. You need to help somebody. Somebody that you know right now needs to be reminded that they ought to have hope. Somebody in your circle right now needs to be encouraged that they ought to have hope. And if you ain't got nobody right now or somebody in your circle, then look for somebody. Look for somebody today as an opportunity for you to help them to have hope. In this situation that we're in, in this season, we've got plenty of people in our family, plenty of people in our world, plenty of people in our residence that need our hope. But then number three, number three, not only should you abound in hope, and number two, not only should you help other people have hope, but number three, I want you to guard against the attack against your hope. Guard. Stand guard knowing that there's always going to be people, emotions, doubt, fear, uncertainty, all of those things that run their course to try to take your hope. And when they do, you run it right back through the taxonomy, run it right back through the secret. And when you run it through the secret, remember that I know God because I know God's word. I know God's word. Therefore, I know God's nature. I know God's nature so I can trust God's promises. And when you run it back through there, nobody can take your hope. You will abound in hope. You'll help somebody else to have hope and you can guard against your hope. Can you hear the text again in Romans 15 and verse number 13? May the God, may God, the source of hope, fill you with joy and peace by means of your faith in him so that your hope will continue to grow by the power of of the Holy Spirit. I want to challenge you to have hope. Don't let anybody steal it because God is the source. He's given you the secret and he's done it so that you will abound. Let's talk to him. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you for being our God. We praise you for the, the privilege and the benefit that you give us in your hope. Lord God, we confidently expect and we long for you to work things out according to your will. Thank you so much for being a God who's omniscient, omnipresent, omnibenevolent, omnipotent, who has all power, holds everything together. Thank you, Father, for defying our finite, fickle, and faithless minds. Thank you, Lord God, for being bigger than us. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to know we can have confidence in you. Thank you for the richness of your word that, that tells us more and more about you every single day. God, I pray pray right now that you bless your people to practice the things that are necessary to have hope. Help us to know your word. Help us to know your will. Help us to know you deeper, more intimately. Help us to be more familiar with you every single day. God, I pray that you bless us right now while we go through this season to never allow our heads to be held low, to be doubtful, to be, uh, to be in a place where our spirits are not built up. God, I pray that you bless us to remain anchored in who you are. I pray that you bless us to remain true to who you are. I pray that you keep our hands and our spirits interlocked with who you are. God, I pray that you go ahead of us and help us to live out the challenge even right now. We want to abound in our hope of you, Father, by being familiar with your word. Bless your people with a spirit and an appetite for truth. Bless your people, Lord God, to help others to have hope. Bless your people to guard against their hope. Help us, Lord God, to live in a way where we know that you are are the God of hope. You've given us hope and nobody can take it away unless we give it to him. Help us to walk in joy today, walk in peace today, walk in confidence today, to walk in hope all day long. We love you. We thank you. We bless you and we magnify you. Use us up doing good, Lord God. And when you're done with us, bring us home in the name of Jesus as we together say and we together pray. Amen and amen. Listen, walk in your hope all day long. Keep your joy. Keep your peace. Keep your head lifted, knowing God is working everything out for his glory and his name's sake. I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. Oh, I got to tell somebody Jesus is the king of my life. Yeah. Oh, I got to show somebody Jesus will make it all it's right. It's going to be all right. Oh, To the well, y'all, every day. Got to talking to my Jesus. She didn't know her life was about to change. She 
said I come to this well every day and my feet they get in mighty tired. Jesus said, don't you worry, give you water from the well that'll never run dry. She got to jumping, feeling mighty happy. She just couldn't hold a piece yet. She went to town telling the people all around she put the word out on the street. She said, come see the man with the master plan Just the savior I have found Oh, blessed Jesus I tell you that I've seen him And he turned my life around And she cried oh, I come and tell somebody oh, Jesus is the king of my Jesus life Jesus is the king of my life Oh, I got yeah. to show somebody Jesus will make it all right oh, it's gonna be all right oh, I got to tell somebody Bye. Bye. 